Today, we will be tackling one of those big questions, one that keeps on popping up for us as a coding school. Does it make sense to still learn how to code since there's AI? Will AI replace software engineers? AI tools like GitHub, Copilot, ChatGPT, and others are improving rapidly. They can write code, debug errors, and even refactor projects. So naturally, people are wondering, do we even need human developers anymore? Now, let's clear something up. The tech job market has been through a lot of turbulence since we recorded that video. Many people lost their jobs and some have blamed AI for us. But that's not the full picture. Layoffs happened for many reasons, mostly due to overhiring during the boom, economic slowdowns, shifting business priorities, and yes, in some cases, AI automation. Many companies didn't need as many people as before for manual tasks. But saying AI alone is responsible, that's just not the case. In fact, AI is creating jobs as well. According to the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report, AI and related technologies are expected to create 170 million new jobs worldwide by 2030, while making 92 million existing jobs redundant. That's a net gain of about 78 million jobs, a 7% increase in total employment. So is AI replacing developers? Not exactly. It's changing the way we work. But human expertise is still very much in demand. Okay, let's get specific. What do you actually do when you work on AI? And what can it do for programmers today? Okay, so you want to know more about AI. I will try to explain what an AI model is very briefly. An AI model is a program that makes predictions. But instead of following the rules of a programmer, like any other program, it learns how to make predictions based on data. To create an AI model, there are four steps. First, we need to fill the model with a lot of data. Then, we are going to use maths to find relationships within the data and recognize patterns. Once the model is trained to recognize patterns, we can already use it to make predictions. And lastly, using more maths, we optimize the model to make it better at predicting. A very, very basic example would be how to make a car price predictor based only in kilometers. We have a known variable kilometers, and we want to predict the unknown, the price. This example could be easily solved with a linear regression, where you calculate the line that better fits the data and then get an estimate price with it. Okay, so let's take a look. Here we have two axes. In the y-axis, we are going to represent the price of a car. In the x-axis, we are going to represent the kilometers that that car has. First, we need our data points. The more we have, the more accurate the, our model is going to be. Our second step is going to be recognizing a pattern here, which is going to be shown by the red line. Our third step is going to be making the prediction. For any given kilometer value of a car, we can now calculate the approximate price that it will have. Our prediction is going to be that the more kilometers a car has, the price is going to be lower. Our fourth step is going to be optimizing this line so that it can better fit our data points. LLM models like ChatGPT use a more complex approach called neural networks, but they still follow the same principles. They are trained with a large amount of text written by humans, it recognizes patterns, and then it calculates one by one which words to choose based on probabilities. If you want to learn more about neural networks, at 4 Berlin we have an AI branch where you will learn how to create your own models without using any external libraries. So here at 4 Berlin, we are using DeepSeek uh, because we can self-host it in our server. It's free. And what we are doing is we are feeding this model with all our Notion database and all our Slack database so that it can generate instant responses to students that have problems. You can find this model in the Olama library. Uh, it's called DeepSeek R1. In our case, we can download the 32 billion parameters model. Once you have your model downloaded, then you can use any front-end uh, platform that you can choose. In our case, it's called Open Web UI. And here, you can select your downloaded model, in this case, DeepSeek R1, and then you can start uh, asking questions. Let's talk about the flip side. How AI is actually making software engineers better at their jobs. 
boosting productivity. Need boilerplate code? Done. Struggling to remember that obscure syntax? AI's got your back. Tools like Copilot let you focus on higher level problems by handling repetitive tasks. Faster debugging. AI can quickly identify errors and even suggest fixes. This means less time staring at a stack trace and more time building features learning and skill development. AI isn't just a tool, it's a teacher. New devs can learn faster by getting instant feedback and examples from AI, while experienced devs can use it to explore new languages or frameworks. Job market resilience. A 2023 LinkedIn report highlighted software development as one of the top in demand skills globally. This demand persists despite advancements in AI, illustrating that human developers are still critical for innovation and problem solving. So what does the future look like? AI isn't replacing good software engineers, it's changing what the job looks like. Engineers will spend less time on manual tasks and more time on strategy, design and communication. The demand for developers isn't shrinking, it's evolving. If you're a software engineer or if you're aspiring to be one, don't fear AI, embrace it, learn how to use it effectively, stay curious, keep learning and focus on the skills that AI can't replicate. That's how you will not only survive, but also thrive in this new era. So will AI replace software engineers? Are we just scratching the surface of how we collaborate with it? Drop your comments below. Hit that bell notification button for more tech content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.